the memory of their devotion be an example to us that we, at last, being faithful unto death, may receive with them the crown of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, one asks the Lord, which is the greatest commandment of all? And he said the greatest commandment is that you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your being. And the second is like the first. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. These are the greatest commands of life. It is good that we celebrate D-Day on the theme of love because it is only through the commandment that we can experience the freedom of life. Since the beginning of time to the present time, men and women have tried to predominate over each other, the strong over the weak, the consequent war, communities against community, nation against nation. But that was never the way that God intended life to be. God gave humanity to live life in freedom. And this is confirmed by the Son and the Holy Spirit. The means to implement this freedom comes from the commandment of love, love of God and love of neighbors. When these commandments are taken away from us, we lose our values and our freedom. Wars have been fought, won and lost. We know that good will always win over evil. We also know that those who have given their lives for God and love of neighbor indeed have eternal life, eternal freedom. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning all. It's the 65th anniversary of D-Day plus one. All of you here have come to recognize what has happened, what happened to the cause of humanity. Recognizing that uh, June 6, 1944 was a, was a watershed date for all of humanity. About uh, 900 years, not quite, before that, another invasion took place the other way, the Norman invasion. Those two invasions represent for Canada very important points in our history, in our culture, our civilization, and who we are today. Because it wasn't just the liberation of Europe, but in fact the liberation of civilization as we understood it. And that was perhaps no better understood than by Canadian troops who at the time, representing only 12 million people, provided uh, one full front. And by this time, 65 years ago, we know that the Canadian troops, we say so with humility, not with pride or a boast, had gone further than any of our allies. We know that the difficulties that had been experienced by Canadian troops at Dieppe played no small role in preparation. We also know that on this day, 65 years ago, and we are blessed to have so many with us who were actually there, that Canada distinguished itself for the next coming 11 months, which would see the cessation of hostilities, but it also provided for Canadians an undeterred, an undeterred willingness to ensure that where there is injustice, and where there is tyranny, and where there is oppression, Canada will respond, and respond more so with a punch well above its weight. It is a date for us to recognize the foundation of our democracy and the restoration of our democracy on days like that. It's not to take away from what our servicemen had done in places like Vimy, in Korea, what they had done in Ortona. There are many, many locations and times in history where when Canadians have been called, ordinary civilians have responded. It's easy to give the speech, but it's much more difficult to put down your life and to sacrifice for those behind you. Reverend Skelton is correct. It is an act of true love. But I want to give you one very, very important and very indistinguishable act of love. And he's here with us today. This individual was one of the first Canadians to land in France, behind the shores 
to disrupt the enemy, the Germans, from coming forth to the beaches to attack the spearhead. Here with us today, I cannot express to you in words our gratitude for generations to come as we pass the baton from, 19, from 1944 to future years, perhaps for a thousand years and even longer, how indebted this nation is to people like Wilf Delory 